Hi, my name is John Knack and I'd like to show you Adobe Configurator 1.0. So, what is Configurator? Well, in simplest terms, think of it as kind of a box of Legos for Photoshop. It's every tool, every menu item in the application. It's also the ability to add scripts and actions. And it's an open-ended set of widgets that you can drag together to create panels. And once you create these panels, you can then save them into workspaces and you can very, very easily share them with other people. Uh, one of the key ideas is that we don't want to just sort of shuffle the pieces around. We actually want to let you add context to the tools that are in Photoshop. So if you just randomly kind of uh, reassigned locations to different tools, that wouldn't really help people understand what those tools are useful for or how you might use them together. So let's take a look at how this thing works. So Configurator is just a simple Adobe Air application. It's basically a Flash Swift file that runs as a desktop app via Adobe Air. And so to get started, it's very simple. You launch uh, Configurator, follow some simple instructions, and you can go in and make your own panel. So I'm going to make mine, uh, just call it uh, Web Design. Really, obviously, call it anything you want. And you can make your panel uh, you know, narrow and tall if you wanted to make your own toolbar. You can make a horizontal toolbar. Uh, really make it any size you want. And then you'll notice on the left, you've got all your tools and all your menu items and so forth. So if I wanted to start Legoing together a set of tools that I would use for web design, I can simply go over and just uh, grab what I want and just cherry pick the things that are most relevant to what I'm doing. So maybe I'd grab my slicing tools. Uh, pick these guys out. Maybe I'd want to do some uh, vector shapes so I could add together my favorite vector shape tools. And you'll notice I'm not doing the most um, precise job in the world, and that's not a problem because it's very easy to go in and um, group select your uh, items. You can uh, align and distribute. You can also press this one button and just auto clean things up. Now, when I'm in Photoshop and I were to click these buttons, it would actually change whatever tool is selected and execute the um, corresponding command. Same goes for the commands. So I can go through here and browse. So let's say for the web, maybe I'd want to put uh, Save for Web in there. So I just drag and drop. Maybe I'd want to add uh, Device Central for mobile authoring. Maybe I want to share my screen with my art director really easily. And I can go in and just uh, tweak the parameters here and resize these guys uh, however I like. Again, I can just uh, automatically clean those up. And you can do things like change the captions, change the tooltips, and even if you want to get under the hood, there's the script that gets executed when you press the button. You never have to see that or fool with it unless you really want to, but if you do want to go and tweak the script, uh, it's very easy to do that. So I could go in and uh, arrange these commands. I can also search, so if, uh, let's say, you know, I wanted to add uh, curves layer adjustment, or um, execute that dialog. Again, I can just drag and drop that into my design. So I've got the ability to browse through all my tools and all of my commands. As I mentioned, I also have the ability to add um, actions and scripts. So for example, let's say I had an action that was uh, going to resize, you know, downsample stuff for the web. I could call this, let's say, uh, uh, resize to 800 by 600. And then I would just call whatever command I've got installed in Photoshop. So I just specify its name and it's set. And now I've got a button which is going to execute that action when I'm in Photoshop. Same thing goes for scripts, uh, if I like. The uh, kind of sleeper power here is this set of widgets, though. And as I mentioned, we want to give it uh, give Configurator the ability to add context. So not just sort of surfacing commands that exist, but actually explaining how they work. Um, and giving some instruction if that's relevant. So the simplest widget is just a little tool uh, for adding text. So you can see I can grab my text area. I'm not going to try to type anything real meaningful here uh, during a demo, but just add a little bit of Laura Mipson text there. And I can add uh, as many of these as I want. I can um, remove them at any time. And similarly, I can do things like drag in uh, images, I can drag in audio and video, uh, I can even drag in other Swifts. Uh, in this case, let me just drag in a placeholder for an image. If I go to my web browser, uh, let's say go to uh, Veerly's blog, and go ahead and just um, copy this image address. Now when I go back to Configurator, if I want to link to that image, I simply paste in its URL, and now you can see that's been dynamically added to my configuration. If I wanted to do something similar, with video, I could do that. 
Um, here I've got a URL for some training content from Total Training. I could go in and just paste that URL. Now there's another great level of customization that you have. And you can see it actually was streaming that H.264 encoded video right into my copy of Configurator, right into this panel. And if then I were to export this, you would see that video actually get loaded in my panel inside of Photoshop. Now I'm not creating the mo world's most interesting panel here. Uh, you'll see a, a much more interesting examples in a minute. Um, but as I mentioned, you can actually load in other Swifts this way. So if there's any um, functionality that you've coded up as a flash file that somebody else has, you can simply point to that and have it dynamically incorporated. Uh, you can also drag in a search widget. So Photoshop has several hundred menu items. Um, obviously you might know something exists but you're not exactly sure where it goes. Again you could uh, just go in here and type in, let's say, uh, type in curves and you would see those results inside of Photoshop. So let's actually take a look at this. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And when I choose export, Configurator automatically targets my panel's output folder inside my uh, Photoshop plugins directory. So I go ahead and hit save. I hit OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and if I've already launched Photoshop, I just need to quit and relaunch the first time I create a panel. Um, subsequent times, if I want to just tweak the panel, I actually don't need to relaunch. I just close and reopen the panel. So I look under Window Extensions and I go down and see Web Design, which is what I just created. And now you can see I've got all of these uh, tools and I've got the corresponding buttons for the menu items that I picked. If I click a tool uh, on the right, you can see it selects it in the Photoshop toolbar. And conversely, if I select it over on the left, it's going to select it in my panel as well. So what you've created really feels like a native, natural part of Photoshop. It doesn't feel like um, any kind of weird extension. Uh, let's go ahead and just create a document just so I've got something available. If I were then to hit Save for Web, uh, it's of course going to bring up the Save for Web dialog. Um, same thing if I were to hit Curves. It's going to go ahead and pull up Curves. So uh, really, Configurator is a very easy way to surface functionality. It's also very easy to add context around things. And with Search, if I were to go in and type Curves and just pick that, then Curves is going to come up. So it's actually giving me the ability to search the whole Photoshop UI if uh, that's a widget that I want to add. So let's take a look at uh, some slightly more interesting examples. So I'm going to go back to my Finder and look at a panel that uh, Russell Brown, uh, Adobe's creative director, has been making. So Russell is really excited about helping people use Photoshop CS4 Extended and the 3D features in it to do lenticular imaging. So actually being able to create um, sort of quasi holographic 3D prints and then view those. So Russell has used the text functionality to um, offer some guidance step by step and then to insert buttons which actually execute the appropriate scripts or menu items. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom you can see he's got a video embedded here and when I hit play it's then going to give me a nice live preview of what the output's going to look like. Uh, let me toggle back over to Photoshop, uh, go back under my window extensions menu and pull up Dr. Brown's lenticular tutorial and there you see <clears throat> that's exactly the design I just had open in Configurator and when I scroll down uh, you've even got the video there streaming right into your Photoshop panel. So <clears throat> really, Configurator is very open-ended. If you just want to use it for yourself to whip up a little uh, toolbar, uh, you know, put in some favorite menu items, you can absolutely do that. If you want to use it more in a uh, sort of training and educational way, that again is very easy to do. So it can be as simple as you want, it can be as complex as you want. Um, a site called Photoshop Cafe uh, has created a very handy panel around teaching people to use selections. So Colin Smith, the guy behind the site, uh, just sort of knock together this panel which brings in all of these uh, selection related tools in Photoshop. Again you can see they're all um, active and, and when I hit the tool it uh, selects the corresponding tool in Photoshop. I have all of the menu items I might find useful and again I could just go ahead and click video. Hello right now we're just doing a little test here. Um, what's and you can see it played the video uh, directly in the panel. So very very simple very easy to use and um, once you've created your panels with uh, Configurator it's also extremely easy to share them.